Hi, today my name is Ashley Castro and my project is on spiral branchius giganteus and their defensive behavior. For this project, I aim to study and observe the marine annelid worm, which is commonly known as the Christmas tree worm. For these organisms, I intended to stimulate the sensory or tactile systems in the comfort of their own habitat. Many animals in danger would have the escape response to run away from a threat because they have the mobile ability to. As um, a sessile organism, I wanted to observe how they elicited um, a few of their behavioral hierarchies. We will be considering the defensive and their maintenance behavioral hierarchy. Some questions I wanted to consider were, how does the organism sense a threat and what causes the retraction behavior? Here we see the Christmas tree worm anatomy. As you can see on the picture on the right side, um, they have two feather-like world stalks that, that are composed of branchial crowns. These extend out of the burrow and thus serves as their, um, their way of looking for food, food and eating and also it serves as their respiratory system. In the next slides, you will see um, that majority of the worm is hidden within a calcareous tube that is within the coral. So you can see here that the branchial crown consists of tentacles made up of ciliated pinnules that draw water and nutrients from the base of the crown to the tip of the worm. These filter feeders thus trap prey within their feather-like tentacles called radials and they transport them to the worm's mouth. Another function that the radials perform is respiration. So basically, they also serve as a harness for oxygen. This feeding mechanism also benefits the host coral by increasing the water flow and nutrient uptake for the neighboring coral polyps. Here we can also see the operculum here. These are the pinnules and the calcareous too. So this leads us to the next slide, um, their choice of habitat. Usually these worms would choose to live in places where there's less potential threats. So as we can see here, these types of coral, on the top we have brain coral, and on the bottom we have parietes. To describe their defensive mechanism or behavior, their defensive behavior, usually when they're threatened or disturbed, they would um, retract into their calcareous tube within milliseconds. These worms do have visual systems. They both have, or they have both compound, simple and compound eyes on their branchial crowns. Their eyes don't recognize shapes. However, they do, um, they do process shadows, um, potentially being a fish passing by or some sort of threat. These videos, you can see the retraction behavior um, elicited through basically um, a poke like in the bottom or just water movement of something nearby. Here I wanted to share um, an old behavioral study I did with tube worms. In this experiment we recorded the relationship of time and threat level to the animal. Low threat was um, indirect contact, um, the act of hand waving over the worm, and then high threat would be um, poking the worm directly for at least three seconds. So we had a sample size of about 50 worms and we divided them in half, 25 for control and 25 for experimental. All the data was then inputted into Excel, it was averaged, and then we graphed for both groups. We then put all this data into R to run a independent samples t-test to determine the um, significance of the results. So we did get a, a, a significant p-value of 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 if you round it up. And so on the average, at the, uh, at the individual level, there was great variation in the study. For the control, which is the low threat, the fastest worm emerged at the time of 12 seconds, whereas the slowest one was 100. 
and for the high threat, it resulted in having a fast worm emerging at 12 seconds, and the slowest worm would emerge at 249 seconds. So this test was regarding the emergence times and the animal behavior. I then wanted to do another um, observational study on the retraction behavior. So for the materials and methods, um, here we have the uh, GoPro Hero 5 I used for visuals. I then also brought a 10 inch ruler and then you can see over here, I brought a syringe. The purpose of the syringe was to basically squirt the worm, um, which would initiate a physical disturbance. For my methods, I still use the two um, disturbance methods. I used a GoPro to elicit shadows or hand movement, same thing. And then I used a syringe to um, elicit the physical disturbance. My site was at fisheye. Also, we use the basic diving essentials to do these observations. So this, uh, this video shows the um, Christmas tree worm eliciting the retraction behavior in the presence of the syringe. In the lab, to experiment on these worms, I would have two test subjects and I would replicate it twice. The objective of this um, lab is to observe the physiology of the retraction behavior of, the, of um, the Christmas tree worm. So we would measure the action potential threshold of retraction behavior with two different stimuli. The first stimuli would then again be non-direct non -direct stimulation and then the second one would be again direct stimulation. So as you saw on the um, previous slides, all of the disturbances elicited the expected behavior. I aim to measure the action potential of the worm prior to the stimuli and after. Here are some of the other worms I found in the area. So as you can see here, um, these worms have simple nervous systems that consist of one major central system and it has um, several secondary nerves. The main system here is the nerve cord, which is circle in red. It runs down the length of the body at its ventral side and is attached to the rudimentary brain in its head. So these nerves help control the motor functions and other parts of the worm's body. And then it somewhat behaves like us. They're also linked to receptors on the skin these receptors would then sense um, different temperature changes like heat or if the water changes to a cold and it, it can also sense touch. So the nerve cord would then make the, nerve, or make the worm's muscles contract rapidly, thus shrinking away from danger. This initiates the retraction behavior of the marine annelid. For the methods of this um, proposed project, I would properly prepare the worm, um, anesthetize it properly, and then once that's done, I would insert the stimulating electrodes to the anterior end where the nerve cord is. After that's done, I would then record the sensory inputs through the different stimuli as I mentioned earlier, the direct and non-direct. I also plan to record the nerve conductivity within the marine annelid as these stimuli are happening. The bigger picture would include um, a bigger understanding of the marine annelids. Spirobranchus giganteus is also known for um, a lot of good things for helping the reef. It would essentially, in studies, it shows that they prevent outbreaks in coral reefs. Um, so these crown of thorns are these um, very reef degrading starfish. What, how these spiral branchus giganteus um, species help prevent that is they have this spine that comes out of their calcareous tube, which then would prevent the starfish from wanting to stick onto the coral and eat them. The Christmas trees also, as I mentioned earlier, help the coral polyps gain more nutrients through the water flow of their feeding behavior. And also in some studies show that 
they help prevent algal blooms. So future studies can then aim to understand how they can potentially use this Christmas tree worm as a bioindicator of stressed reefs. And also they can use it to potentially and hopefully combat the global issue of coral bleaching. That is what I plan to do for the lab and what I hope to do it one day. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you understood it. Please feel free to ask me any questions. And yeah, that concludes my presentation.